Hello again, Internet. Astro with Roro here. Meteor showers can be a spectacular natural display of fire and fury as particles from comets and asteroids slam violently into the Earth's upper atmosphere, creating beautiful trails for us to view down here on the ground. Every year, there are numerous meteor showers that the Earth crosses the path of in our orbit around the Sun but not all of them are created equal. Factors like the moon's position and viewing conditions at that time of year can wash out faint meteors, resulting in subpar performances for some meteor showers. So today, I'm going to rank 14 of the best meteor showers so that you know which are worthy to get out and enjoy in 2023. If you've been eyeing up my wallpaper here, then do be sure to check out my Patreon page linked in the description below, where I recently uploaded this gorgeous view of the Vela supernova remnant available to my Patreons. There are optimized wallpaper sizes for desktop, laptop, and mobile devices. Okay, let's get into the tier list and ranking these meteor showers. Here we have our ranking system, and on the right we have our meteor showers. These are listed just from the start of the year all the way down to the end of the year. So let's get started up here with the quadranted meteor shower happening around the 3rd of January. So very early on, not actually too far away from when I'm filming this. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, this is, this is a really good meteor shower actually. Um, you know, it's got some large particles which sort of keep it up high. They're moving, you know, with an okay speed. We're talking about like that sort of 40 kilometer a second speed. So they can create some nice streaks with decent lengths. Um, they're actually quite large particles. So, you know, they can really create some really nice, big, hefty sort of looking uh, meteors in the sky, um, which is, you know, really nice. Unfortunately, this year, you know, it is marred by a 92% full moon. So most of the night, not really going to be able to see any of those really small meteorites. Um, so that's going to unfortunately bring it down a bunch. Uh, there is a little section towards the end of the night where you might actually be out a little bit without the moon. So I'm going to drop this one in, in a B tier here. So not a bad way to start off the year. Next up, we've got the Lyriads meteor shower. On the 20 to 23rd of April, um, this is actually one of the oldest known meteor showers. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to have that longevity there. Another Northern Hemisphere, only one here. Um, this actually has some quite fast meteors getting up almost around that sort of 50 kilometers a second, um, which creates some really nice long streaks. You can even get occasionally some sort of glowing dust afterwards in the sky. Um, however, the sort of the meteor activity, mm, low to moderate uh, for this one, but you know, there, there is a new moon. So that, that ups it again, no moon at all. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna maybe drop it in the B tier again. So start of the year looking pretty good for those of uh, you in the Northern Hemisphere, which is nice. Next up, Eta Aquarids. This is, uh, you know, early on, end of the first week of May. Particles from this actually come from Halley's Comet, which is very cool. Um, these are really fast particles as well. They're going to be colliding with the atmosphere 65 to 70 kilometers a second. So creating some really nice long streaks. There's usually actually some really good activity actually as well. So usually this would sort of be up around this, you know, higher, high tier. Um, unfortunately though, 94% moon, it's gonna crush this one down. So th there might still be a couple of okay meteors, but for me, this is going C tier. Um, you know, normally quite nice, but that moon is just gonna sort of destroy a lot of those really small meteorites. So that activity is gonna sort of fall off a cliff pretty badly here. Next up, uh, the only daytime meteor shower that we have. Uh, this is a really interesting one, not well known, of course, because it's daytime. Um, but the Aritids meteor shower, you know, happens early June, but because it's daytime, even though, you know, you can get some meteors, it's very rare to see one. Occasionally you might get one that just sort of skims the atmosphere really brightly just before sunrise, which you can capture. But for me, this is this is worst meteor shower of the year. So it's going straight into the FT, unfortunately. Sorry there. Moving on, Delta Aquids. So this one here, end of July, 
Um, this is best for the Southern Hemisphere viewers, actually this one. This is a reasonably slow particulate matter, about 40 kilometers a second. So you get some okay trails, low to moderate, um, meteor activity and the meteors are usually you know a bit on the small side um, so they're not creating massive fireballs or anything like that and you know this year as well it's also getting sort of killed by that moon so um, this unfortunately gonna have to drop this one into the E tier here same night actually though we do have the Alpha Capricornids so this one here it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not a great meteor shower, let's be honest here. It's got pretty low activity, um, and unfortunately, same with the Delta, you know, it's, it's got that moon, so we're not really going to be able to see anything, so I'm also going to be leaving it pretty low in the E tier. But let's not get discouraged, because up next, we have the Persids. Persid meteor shower. Middle of August, this is a Northern Hemisphere meteor shower, and it is, it, it's a good meteor shower, I'm not gonna lie. There is usually quite a bit of activity, and those meteors, they're moving quick, around 60 kilometers a second. Um, so this is, you know, this is a really, really solid meteor shower. Um, normally sort of up around here, but this year, it's also got a perfectly new moon. So this, I think, will be our first S-tier meteor shower. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you can get out to some dark skies, this one is gonna be one that's well worth it. It's gonna be August, so nice and warm in the Northern Hemisphere, and it, it could be a really nice show. Definitely highly recommend checking out the Persid meteor shower. Now, this one here, I've actually, <laughs> I've actually put the wrong date down for this one. It's not the 9th of December, it's the 9th of October, 9th of October. So, 9th of October, Draconids meteor shower. Again, another Northern Hemisphere one. You lucky Northern Hemispheres, you know. The Draconid meteor shower, it can be a little bit temperamental. Um, you know, sometimes it, it, can go, it can go pretty hard, you know, and it could be up here. Other times it can really bust. Interestingly enough, the Draconid meteor shower actually can have what's called a meteor storm, where you can have thousands, yes, thousands of meteors per hour. Uh, this usually happens, you know, every now and then though. This is not an every year kind of thing. Um, mostly there's not too much activity. Um, but in 1933 and 1946, they did have that meteor storm. So can occasionally be a bit of a sleeper. Best viewing for this one is really early in the night, actually. Like just sort of after sunset. Um, once you hit that sort of astronomical dark, uh, about an hour and a half after sunset, something like this. So, you know, it might be worthwhile staying up for this one just because you never know. You know, you never know when you're gonna have that really high meteor storm level. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop this one also into a B tier because you never wanna miss a, me uh, a meteor storm, right? And the fact you don't have to stay up late, extra bonus. All right, Southern Torrids. 11th of October. This is, um, you know, this has low to moderate activity. It's not too bad. There's going to be a new moon. So, you know, that's, that's pretty good. But overall, you know, I'm going to say this is a C class. This is, this is a C level. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a meteor shower. I wouldn't go out of my way for it. But if you happen to be out, absolutely look up, see what's there. All right. Orionids meteor shower. Yes, from the region of Orion. This is happening, you know, midway through, two thirds of the way through October. And this is another one where the particles come from Halley's Comet, which is cool. Uh, always nice when you have that. You have sort of moderate activity with this one. So, you know, that's, that's a good start. And, you know, they can be actually quite beautiful. You get some decent size, um, you know, particles, they're moving pretty quick, around 65,000 kilometers an hour. So I'm, you know, I reckon this is maybe B tier, verging on maybe A tier. It, the, the problem with, you know, the Orionids is you gotta get up really early in the morning. This isn't something where you can just sort of stay up a bit late, watch it till midnight, no. This is a, this is a midnight till sort of 
5 a.m. sort of thing. So I reckon that's gonna, for me, pump it back down to B tier. But if, you're, if you happen to be up around that time, absolutely you should get out and watch this one. Northern Torrids. This, this is similar to the Southern Torrids, but of course for those in the Northern Hemisphere. Should have mentioned before, Southern Torrids, Southern Hemisphere. Don't bother if you're Northern Hemisphere. This one here, reasonably low activity, you know, uh, it's also got a new moon out, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this one in the D tier. You know, it's mm, it's okay. It's not tr it's not terrible, but it's nothing to write home about. So we'll go we'll go a D tier for that one. It's, you know, it's about time the northern hemisphere had a had a not so great meteor shower as well. So Leonids, okay. Leonids is a very interesting one. 18th of November. This is actually some of the fastest meteors that we get. We're talking 70 plus kilometers a second. So they make monstrous trails. They move really quick. Uh, and these meteors burn up super fast when they hit the atmosphere. Um, there's moderate to good, um, you know, meteor stuff. So, so it's making it look pretty good so far. Um, there's actually, you know, usually there's some larger meteors as well, so you can get some really nice sort of fireballs occasionally coming through, which is well. And the cool thing about the Leonids is every 30 or so years, there's what they call the, the meteor storm, where you can get those hundreds and hundreds or maybe even thousand meteors an hour. So I think this one here is one to watch out for. You know, we're, we're definitely getting up, you know, towards the top. Unfortunately, the last meteor storm was in 2002. So still maybe a little bit to go before the next meteor storm. Uh, you know, unlikely to maybe happen this year, but, but you never know. Um, you know, and that would, I think, normally put it up around the S tier, but similar to, you know, some of the other ones with the Orionids, it, the best viewing is just before dawn. Um, so you do have to either be up really early or stay up all night. So I'm gonna drop this one straight into A tier. Definitely worthy of going out to view this one here. Absolutely. Um, next up, Geminids. The Geminids is, it's a, it's a classic. It's actually one of my favorite. I try and get out every year to see it. And this is visible really well, both in the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. And it has, it has very high um, meteor activity. You know, 100 plus maybe meteors an hour. You're talking, you know, meteor every, every 30 or so seconds with this one. Some of those might be very small, absolutely, but um, it's a reliable meteor shower with really good activity. The meteors, unfortunately, are quite slow. Some of the slowest, actually, um, down around 30, 35,000, oh, sorry, 30 to 35 kilometers a second. Um, but that can sometimes work in your favor. You know, it's easy to see when they're starting, and so you catch them in your peripheral, and then you can go and look at it, and it hasn't sort of finished yet. You can actually see them slowly trail across the sky, which can be really nice. Because it's reliable, definitely, you know, increases the score quite a bit. Um, interestingly enough, the meteors for this one tend to be yellow in color due to the composition of um, the asteroid and comets that this one came from. Uh, this year as well, it's a new moon. So that's really nice. When the Geminids has a new moon, it, it really starts rocketing up there. This one usually as well peaks around sort of midnight, maybe early morning. Um, so you do have to get up and maybe stay up a little bit, but it's absolutely worth it. To me, this is an S tier meteor shower this year. So we've got, we've got two S tiers. That's pretty nice. That's, this, you know, it's, it's looking to be a good year for meteor showers. Finally, we have the Ursid's meteor shower. Just before Christmas, you know, that's, that's good. Everyone's maybe already on holidays. So you'd think, okay, this one's looking good. I might already have some time off. Fortunately, it's, it's really not. Um, we're talking pretty low meteors now, maybe five or so, one every 10 minutes maybe. Um, and unfortunately also, we have an 85% moon, which is pretty much gonna, gonna wipe it out until you know, maybe very early in the morning when the moon sets. So for me, this is, you know, this is going down into that E tier. Um, so there we go.
2023 Meteor Shower Tea List. And honestly, this is a pretty good year for Meteors. We've got lots in this SAB tier, um, and you know, there's always some less favorable me Meteor Showers. Sometimes they're just, they're just not reliable, but I think this is a great year to get out and look at some Meteor Showers. Well, that's it for this Meteor tier list. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure to subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you disagree or agree with any of the rankings that I've put into this tier list. My name's Rowan. This is Astro with Roro and Clear Skies.